you, you got to picture it. The most famous story in the Bible is probably this story, right? Even non-Christians know it. Um, it's a story that pretty much everybody knows. It's a story that gets um, referenced to um, a lot of times in competitions. You know, David against Goliath kind of mentality. But this is a real story that happened. And you kind of picture it. Uh, the story continues to where we were at Beth Shemesh. Um, as the Ark of the Covenant uh, goes to Kerjef Jerim, Saul, it's the end of the days of the judges. It's over 3,000 years ago. And all of a sudden, uh, we see that uh, they ask for a king. They ask Samuel, uh, we want a king. We want to be like the other nations. And it, it you know, it was Samuel that was brokenhearted. Um, and God said, you know, don't take it personally, Samuel. They haven't rejected you. They've rejected me. Uh, they wanted to be like other nations. And, and that's what's so tragic about um, that text there when they asked for a king, because they were called Israel, which means governed by God. God wanted to govern them, but they wanted to be like the other nations. So uh, Saul becomes the first king of Israel. And in chapter 15 of 1 Samuel, he gets rejected, right? Because he was supposed to kill all the Amalekites. He did not. He brought back the, you know, he was supposed to wipe them completely out. All the animals, uh, everything. Here comes Saul, um, you know, rejoicing. He set up a monument in Carmel for himself. He comes back. He says to Samuel, I performed all that the Lord commanded. And Samuel goes, really? Then what's the sound of the buying in my ear, the sound of the animals? Well, I brought him back for a sacrifice. And then um, we see that uh, it was Samuel that said, who's this? Well, this is Agai, the king of the Amalekites. So it was at that point that Saul is rejected as the king. It was Samuel that said, it's better to obey than the sacrifice. And God has rejected you, Saul. And so David in chapter 16 is anointed the king. And you recall that as Samuel came to Bethlehem, it's interesting because uh, it was the Lord that said to Samuel when you open up chapter 16, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing that I've rejected him? In other words, it's time to move on, you know, uh, Samuel. And I'm going to anoint the new king. And it was Eliab, keep that in mind, uh, as we go into chapter 17, that Eliad, they brought him before Samuel and said, this has got to be the, the Lord's anointed before him um, because he looked handsome. He was tall. He looked strong. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't look at the appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as a man sees. For the man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Listen, it has everything to do with this story here. David is young. He's the youngest of the sons. He's anointed the, the king. Um, and all of a sudden in chapter 17, we read, The Philistines gather the armies together uh, for battle, and they gather at Sakhah between the uh, camp between Sakhah and Azekah and Ephes Damon. Here they are. They're camped on these hillsides over here. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. So you got to picture it. Here are the Philistines here. Here's the, the children of Israel here. Bethlehem is down this valley here. And as the champion went out from the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits. Now, we don't know exactly a cubit, but it's about 18 inches is what, you know, we can guess. So six cubits would make it what? Here's a guy that's nine feet tall. This guy is huge. And he's a champion. He's not just a big clumsy guy. This guy is strong. He's big. He's nine feet tall. He has a bronze helmet on his head. And he is armed with a coat of uh, mall, uh, male. And coat of uh, was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had a bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beams. In other words, big. And his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels. If I remember right from my notes, that's like 25 pounds. I mean, a shot put in college, I believe, is what, 12 pounds? 
for the strongest guys, this is over twice that. This is the 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 head of the spear, along with the 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 shaft of the spear is like a weaver's beam. This guy is strong. He's a champion. He is huge. He is like something that we've never seen before. And then he stood up and cried to the armies of Israel and said to uh, them, Why do you come up and line up, up for battle? For I am not a, a Philistine and you the servants of Saul. Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. And if he's able to fight with me and kill me, then he will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. So here's Goliath that comes out and he, you can picture this guy stomping up and down this valley, issuing this challenge to the children of Israel. Hey, if we go to battle, choose a man. Whoever wins, you know, if, if you win, whoever, you know, you choose to defeat me, uh, then we'll be your servants. Uh, if I win, then you're going to be our servants. Not much of a challenge when everybody's looking at this because this guy is huge. And I just picture him, you know, up and down this valley. He's doing it. And, um, and we see that the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. I mean, they're trembling and they're you know sandals uh, they're they're trembling and Saul is specifically mentioned because when Saul became the king he was what head and shoulders above everybody else I think everybody's looking at Saul going why don't you go out you're the biggest one that we have here and they trembled now David the son of um, Ephrathite of Bethlehem Judah whose name whose name was Jesse who had eight sons, and the man was old, advanced in years, in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons had gone out to follow Saul into battle. Eliab was one of those, and in verse 14, David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. In other words, they were in the army. And David occasionally went to return from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening. So twice a day for 40 days, he's, he's walking up and down, challenging this, this you know, uh, issuing, issuing this challenge. And these guys are trembling, you know, they're afraid. Who's going to come out and fight me? Then Jesse said to his son, David, take now for your brothers an ephod of dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at camp. So, hey, David, you need to take some food up there. You know, you need to come up the valley, take some food, and carry these ten cheeses and the captain of their thousand. See how your brothers fare. Get some news from the front line because they couldn't text. They couldn't make a cell phone call or anything like that. Want to know how the battle's going. It's been 40 days. You know, it's been a while. And, uh, and Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah. That's right here where we're standing, fighting the Philistines. So David rose early in the morning, and the sheep and a keeper took the things and went as Jesse, his dad, had commanded him. And he came out to, uh, to the camp of the army, was going to go out and fight, and is shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array, army against army. They're ready to go and have battle. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army, came and greeted his brothers. It's like David's like, I got to see what's going on here, man. I can't wait to see what's going on. And he talked with them. And there was a champion, the Philistines of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistine. And he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid, exceedingly afraid. And so the man of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he's come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter, give him his father's house, exemption from taxes, there you go, in Israel. And then David spoke to the man who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? So David hears this. Remember, these guys are afraid for 40 days. David hears this, too young to be in the army. And he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defy the armies of the living God? In other words, he goes on and he says um, that, and the people answered him in this manner saying, so it shall be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his older brother, heard when he spoke to the man, 
And Eliab's anger was aroused against David, and he said, Why do you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. David, he, he's mad, his older brother. He's mad because you come down here. I think Eliad was mad because he was rejected as king. And David, you just come down because you think you're a big shot. And you come down to see the battle. And David said, what I have done now, is there not a cause? Listen, I have that earned line in my Bible. Because we as Christians, you and your life, you're going to face Goliaths. And those Goliaths are going to mock you. And they're going to mock you day after day after day after day. The enemy, we have an enemy, Satan, who accuses the brother in Revelation chapter 12 says day and night. And he will accuse us and he'll try to get you to be afraid. He'll try to get me to be afraid, to tremble, you know. And here's the thing to remember. Don't we have a cause? David is saying, don't we have a cause, guys? You know, he, he knew the promises of God. He knew that God was bigger than Goliath. And those Goliaths that we face in life are huge. I mean, this guy is huge. You can understand. But David is saying, because he was a man of faith, he says, don't we have a cause? And you know the story, as you read it, that David went and picked five stones. Why five stones? We don't know. Um, different, you know, there's, uh, Goliath had, um, you know, five brothers. Um, was it because, you know, in case he missed, uh, you know, the first time? But David, he, he lines up with Goliath. And it's an amazing story. I'm not going to read all of it because it, it goes quite a bit, uh, 58 verses. Um, but it was that um, when the Philistine, um, you know, here's David. He tries to put on the armor of Saul. It doesn't fit. He says, this isn't going to work. And listen, go through life. Don't try to put somebody else's armor on. Okay? You have the armor of God, but be who you are and how God made you and where he's placed you and the gifts he's given to you. And then all of a sudden he goes out. And David put in his hand, I'll read it to you, a bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in the forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on the face of the earth. You know, he, here's this um, guy, Goliath, that he comes out to David and he says, you know, who are you? Am I a dog? He was insulted by David. And, and David, you know, he says, I'm going to feed you to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And, um, and David said to him before he killed Goliath, You come with me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you've defiled. That who is who does our battle, folks. It is the Lord. We come in the name of the Lord. And there's nothing too big. You know, sometimes it's a person. Sometimes it's a situation. Sometimes it's... You know, finances, sometimes it's our health, sometimes it's relationships, whatever it may be. The Goliaths that we face, we come in the name of the Lord and we can have faith that He is a big God. I mean, He created the universe. He can take care of the Goliaths. And this is a valley that reminds us of it. When we become afraid and we face those giants in our lives, that the Lord is the one that defeats those giants in our lives because we come in faith and we come in the name of the Lord. And just as David, you know, one shot, just like a missile that went right and hit him right between, you know, the, the eyes, Goliath goes down, David goes down, chops his head off. And all of a sudden, others are excited. The camp of Israel, you know, they, they uh, defeated the Philistines. And listen, a great testimony for you to others that are around you is when you come in faith and they see that the Lord is working in your life to defeat the Goliaths, all of a sudden people they see that and say, you know what, that same God can work for me as well with the Goliaths that I face. And so, um, an incredible story. Like I said, the most, probably most famous story in all of the Bible. Everybody knows about, you know, the story of David and Goliath. And, um, but the key to it is David didn't defeat Goliath, but the Lord of hosts defeated him. So, Father, I pray that... Um, in a few days, we will go back and we'll be facing Goliaths, we'll be facing challenges, but we would remember this valley that 3,000 years ago, you were faithful to David, you'll be faithful to us with your promises. And Lord, um, that there's no giant too big, circumstance or difficulty 
that you can't defeat, uh, that you can't work. But Lord, we come in the name of the Lord in every situation and just look into your promises, uh, hiding under the shadow of your wings. You're our strength, as the psalmist write. Um, and Lord, to allow you to bring victory in our lives in every situation, in Jesus' name.